Well, one way this debate will be different from 2020 is the candidates will have their mics muted when it's not their turn to speak. Now, their last debate four years ago was marked by disruptions as Trump and Biden interrupted and talked over each other. So tonight, viewers might look to body language to gauge reactions. That topic has come up in presidential debates before. For example, a lot was made of Trump's body language during his 2016 debates with Hillary Clinton, including Trump's big gestures, smirking, and looming over Clinton. Let's bring in Mark Bowden to help us break this all down. He is uh, trained political leaders right across the world on their body language. He joins us tonight from Toronto. Okay, so Mark, uh, I, I want to start talking to you about this and, and, and starting with the first moment, that handshake that we are likely to see tonight, perhaps. Uh, how important is that moment? Well, it's super important, of course, because you get the meeting of these two, let's say, titans going into some kind of battle. Now, we know Trump has a very special handshake that he likes to give where he'll try and pull the other in and off balance. If he tries to do that, how is Biden going to react to that? Of course, we know Biden needs to look tonight totally in physical and mental control. Of course, we expect that Trump may well try and get him off balance, and so he's going to have to countermeasure that. What will his countermeasure be? Right. And, and, you know, as I was laying out in the intro, it, this debate is going to look a lot different because we it, it sound a lot different because, of course, mics are going to be muted. Does that kind of up the ante when it comes to how important nonverbal communication is? Well, not only that, Travis, but we've got a split screen as well, as far as I understand it. So we should be able to see not only the person speaking, but the person reacting and their silent reactions. Well, normally they would have got a chance to kind of jump in on each other and give some kind of verbal parry to what's going on. They now know that they're going to be muted. It's right that some there might be some spill from mic to mic, but even so, they're going to look a little bit stupid maybe mm -hmm. if they're talking and the audience aren't hearing them so what they should be trying to do is how clear can their non-verbal reactions be to the other speaker and can they score some points with those clear non-verbal reactions and parries to what else is going on you know, uh, when you cross the border, for example, border agents are trained to, to kind of look for nonverbal cues, whether or not somebody is lying. Does the general population pick up on that with facial expressions and things like that as well? Well, of course, we all are able to pick up nonverbal expressions, but we tend to bias towards the negative. Mm. If we don't quite know, better to be safe than sorry. Always read it as being a bad signal. So we're on the whole actually not very good readers of body language on an instinctual level. We just guess towards the negative, And when we're right, we tend to feel like we made a good choice. We tend to forget all the times we got it wrong. So talk to me about what you are going to be watching for tonight. Hard uh, gestures, soft gestures as well. Tell me what, what, what you'll look for. Well, I'm going to be looking for very direct gestures from both candidates. Direct means that they feel confident about what they're saying. Think about Biden when he's direct down what I would call the wheel plane here with both hands in symmetry and his voice lowers and he leans into the camera. We know he's really confident about what he's saying and he's well practiced about the message that he's given. Trump, he likes to go wide with his gestures. He likes to do these kind of symbol smashes with his gestures or squeeze box gestures. He likes to be big and fill up the space. But again, symmetrical and really direct. Now, if they start getting asymmetrical and really indirect with what they're doing, then we know they're destabilized in some way. And we know that both will want to be destabilizing the other so we can non-verbally show to the audience this is not the candidate for you. Look, they're under too much stress. They can't handle the situation. Fascinating stuff. We got to leave it there, Mark, but appreciate your analysis. That is Mark Bowden, a body language expert and author joining us from Toronto.